required before the commission. Question. License plate? Mrs. Oswald. I would have remembered this black spot if it were there at the time the commission showed me this, or the FBI. When the FBI first showed me this photograph, I remember that the license plate, the number of the license plate, was on this car, was on the photograph. It had white and black numbers. There was no black spot that I see on it now. Question, who showed you the picture? The FBI, or the Secret Service, or the Commission? Answer, the FBI first, and then the Commission. Question, now at the time the Commission showed you the picture in Washington, was there a hole shown in the picture where the car's license plate should be? Answer, no, I don't know what happened to this picture, because when the commission showed me the picture, there was not this spot here. If there was a hole, I would have asked them about it right away. Why that hole is there, or that black spot. Associated Press photographer James Olkins took this picture as the first shot was fired. People all over the country asked, how could Oswald be downstairs watching the motorcade if he was upstairs shooting the president? The FBI puzzled over it, too. The reason for it is going to be down in this area down here. Oh, yeah. This is the reason for this last one. That's where you The commission said the man in the doorway was Billy Lovelady. Although Lovelady agreed, he also said he wore a red and white striped sport shirt, buttoned near the neck, and no jacket. No commission member ever saw Lovelady. Apparently, no commission member even saw a picture of him. The press was unable to obtain one. This is a previously unpublished photograph of Lovelady taken by us from a camouflage position. Here is a picture of Oswald at the time of his arrest. Was the man in the doorway Oswald or Lovelady or neither one? If it was Oswald, that fact alone is proof of his innocence. The suspect's name is Jack Rubenstein, I believe. He goes by the name of Jack Ruby. Did yeah. you know Ruby before this? No, sir. Saw him in this very same room Friday night when we had the defendant up here. If some of you will recall, he asked a question from out here in the audience or answered a question. He's standing right back here, and I didn't know who he was. I thought he was a member of the press, and he told me as we walked out of here that he was a nightclub operator here. What question did he ask? Huh? What question did he ask? I don't remember, but he... he uh, maybe it was an answer, but he said something. I, it was Friday night when I asked you to... It looked to me like you're a good friend. I don't know what it is. <laughs> we have not been able to find anyone of our men who saw and recognized Ruby in the, uh, at the time of this transfer. The thing that I saw, I was waiting at the armored car to ride with the suspect to the county jail. I knew that they would bring him out, they had cleared the way, and then I heard the shot. I didn't see the gun, I didn't, I just saw the struggle that ensued. I immediately ran from the armored car down the ramp and tried to help stew the prisoner that had shot Oswald. Now, do I believe that you recognize this man after the capture? Yes, sir. Uh, did I understand you to say that if you had seen him before, you would have ejected him? Yes, sir. Well, now, as, as uh, Oswald was escorted out, were the policemen to either side of him? Weren't there any in front of him? Yes. How did that, the man get by the policeman in front? That, he, the only thing I know is what, that someone said he jumped. This is Detective Jim Lavelle, who was, this morning, handcuffed to Oswald.
and was bringing him out to the car to be transferred to a county jail. Could you tell us what happened? Now, you were uh, handcuffed to him? I was handcuffed to him and also had a hold of the waistband of his trousers. I saw this man come from the crowd, and at the time he emerged from this crowd of people, he was not more than six or seven feet from us, from me. Did you see the gun in his hand as I he came? I saw the gun in his hand as he emerged from the crowd. But being such a short distance from me, uh, I had no time to say anything. Now, uh, when Oswell fell to the ground, was he unconscious at that point? I would say if he was not, he was near, uh, nearly so. Uh, as, just as soon as the uh, my partner on the other side, Mr. Graves, grabbed uh, Jack's hand with the gun in such a manner that he couldn't fire it anymore. Did you recognize him when he came through? Yes, I have known Jack Ruby for a number of years, and I recognized him just as soon as he emerged from the crowd. We are in the office of Napoleon J. Daniels, a real estate broker in Dallas, Texas. Mr. Daniels, have you been associated with the Dallas Police Force? I was for seven years. Uh, in what capacity? As a patrolman. Where were you on November 24th, 1963? Uh, well, I was going down to inspect the assassination site around 11 o'clock, I guess, and. Uh, I noticed Officer Vaughn standing in the, uh, on the Main Street ramp of the city hall at the basement. And uh, I stopped to go back to talk to him, and I asked him what his purpose was there. And he told me he was keeping anybody from entering the basement, because they fixed to transfer Oswald. How long did you remain in front of the Main Street ramp with Officer Vaughn? Mm, about 20, 20 minutes, I guess. <clears throat> did you remain there until you heard a shot? I did. From 11 o'clock until 11.20, did anyone enter the basement through the Main Street ramp? There was one man about a couple of minutes before um, Oswald was shot. Could you describe that man? Yes, he was a white man, about weighed about 175, and uh, had on a blue suit, about 5'9". What was the color of his hair? Uh, it's brownish, and he's bald in the top. Was there anything else distinctive about the gentleman? Uh, he had his right hand in his right coat pocket, and something seemed to be protruding from it. What was your impression when you saw him enter the basement with his hand in his pocket? My first impression was that he had a gun in his pocket, and then uh, I didn't think too much about it because Officer Vaughn didn't challenge him. He just let him go on down in there. Did Vaughn in, uh, indicate any uh, recognition or knowledge of who the person was when the man passed by him? Well, I just assumed he did because he didn't try to stop him. I assume he knew who he was. Did Vaughn allow anyone else to enter the basement other than that one man? No. How long after that man entered the basement did you hear a shot? Mm, about time enough, I guess, for him to walk down in there and get settled. Chief Curry, would you comment on the presence of Jack Ruby in the basement of City Hall while Lee Harvey Oswald was being transferred? How did he get there? Well. Of course, it's been pretty well established by this time that he came in the ramp entrance, on the Main Street entrance. And uh, the officer who was guarding this door had stepped away to permit a vehicle to come out. It wasn't necessary that he do this, but he had stepped across the sidewalk to assist a vehicle coming out of the basement. And that's when Ruby came into the basement. And this was less than a, two minutes before Oswald was brought down. Where was Officer Vaughn standing when this man entered past him? He stood right in the center of the entrance to the basement there. And what was his responsibility or obligation that day, do you know? To not let anyone go down in there for them. I know. Have you any idea why he allowed this man to enter past him? No, I don't know, other than just he knew who he was or something. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought at the time. He had to know who he was. Did Officer Vaughn look at the man who walked past him? He looked in this direction, yes. We are at the Lewiston Raceway in Lewiston, Maine, with Mrs. Nancy Hamilton, owner of the Hamilton Stables. Mrs. Hamilton, did you testify as a witness before the Warren Commission? Yes, I did. On June 2nd, 1964, we have been a freelance investigator for various police departments, 
district attorney's offices, such as the Sacramento District Attorney's Office, Suffolk County, Massachusetts District Attorney's Office, Boston Police Department, and various uh, private detectives. And before that, were you employed by Jack Ruby? Yes, I was. This was in 1961 in Dallas at his club, The Carousel, and I was bartender, waitress, and Rather, the manager there. How did you get that job? I had gone into Dallas not knowing anyone, and of course, the first place I went was the police department. And uh, they were very kind and got me the job there. They got you the job at Jack Ruby? Uh, yes, they did. Did they know Ruby? Personally, oh yes, very well. Vouched for him, wonderful person, great.